This is Ariassos, our last stop in this Pisidia tour, and one of the southern cities of Pisidia. It's situated just north of the Chubuk Boas, which the main road from Antalya to Bujak and Budur crosses. So it's very easily accessible from the main road, just a kilometre to the west of it. And the site is quite famous because of the building behind me, which is one of the few completely intact structures from Roman Pisidia. It's a triumphal arch uh, built in around 230 AD uh, to commemorate the victories of the Roman Emperor Severus Alexander over the Persians, the Sasanians, who at that time were mounting a major challenge to Rome. And so warfare for the first time came to Anatolia. Cities began to put up fortifications again. They were called upon to provide troops or armaments for Roman forces. And there was a big collective effort to um, resist this new enemy from the east and victories were celebrated with buildings like this. The only comparable building in this part of Turkey perhaps is the Arch of Hadrian in Antalya, which is a much more decorated uh, piece of work, um, whereas this um, building is extremely plain. Um, Ariasus was not a large city, it didn't have enormous amount of wealth, um, and uh, so didn't have the means to commission um, either expensive ateliers of sculptors to carve uh, um, ornamental decoration on the, the arch, um, or for that matter to buy in expensive marble to, uh, to, to put up. So it's, it's, a, it's a very plain but very striking monument. And on the top you'll see that there are three large bases, a fourth one has fallen off, which on which would have stood statues of the emperors or members of the emperor's family. So that might put a sort of Roman imperial stamp on a city which otherwise is quite traditional and Pisidian. Um, coming in through the arch one walked up the main street of the city. Uh, you pass a large church which was clearly built at a later date and reach a small bathhouse and a fountain house at the head of an aqueduct which can be followed for some five or six kilometres to its source a little to the south of, uh, of Ariasos. If you then turn up the hill slope to the right, that is to the south, looking in this direction, uh, you'll see that it's covered with buildings, mostly houses built on terraces, about seven terraces from where we are standing to the top of the hill. And about fourth or fifth terrace up, we come to the public buildings of the pre-Roman city, of the Hellenistic city of, of Ariassos, which were placed there because they were within a defensive fortification and could be protected, uh, whereas the Roman structures and the street we're standing in didn't require protection at the time that it was, it was laid out. So in other words, as often happens, you have the Hellenistic city high on the hill, protected by walls. When those walls were no longer serving any purpose, the Roman buildings spread over them down the hill just as they did at Sia, um, and, and other sites. Ariasos was a small place and the public buildings of the Hellenistic city are correspondingly small. There's a little market building with no more room than for about five shops or workshops facing the Agora. Um, there's a small bouleuterion that might have accommodated 200 persons um, at most, I may be pitching it a bit high there, but which is also reasonably preserved and can be made out today. So we are looking at a, 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 a compact, um, small community. 
The other very striking thing about this site is um, are the tombs. There are a lot of well-preserved built tombs. They look like mini temples, if you like. Um, and they're placed all along the main road going into the city. So on the left-hand side as we go up from the arch. And then they curve around towards, even right towards the centre of the Hellenistic city so that it becomes almost impossible to distinguish where the living quarters of the city ended and where the cemeteries began. They sort of interlock with one another. And that's another feature that's very characteristic of these southern Pisidian and North Lycian cities, that the distinction between the city of the living and the city of the dead, which is very clear in other parts of the ancient world, is here very much blurred. Ariassos is a city without any significant written history. It doesn't have a story attached to it like Kremna with its siege or like Antioch with St Paul's visit. Um, but it was occupied from 2nd century BC through till 6th century AD at least. Uh, as were all the other cities. It was continually being rebuilt, so houses you can see that were started with Hellenistic layers at the bottom and then they've been refurbished and repaired right through to late antiquity. We mapped about 50 houses on the site, that's probably only a, a relatively small fraction of the original number, and they are very even in size. There are not very many large houses, very large houses. Corresponding, there aren't very many small, of the, small houses. They all fall in a range of, say, three or four to six or seven rooms, um, which suggests to me that the population was relatively um, even in terms of its economic spread. This was not a city which had huge magnates who owned most of the resources and lots of very poor people at the bottom of the tree. It was um, a, a relatively egalitarian community and I think that that model applies to most of uh, at least Hellenistic Pisidia. Probably the wealth distinctions began to widen in the Roman period as some big magnates, as it were, got their hands on more land and could assert themselves at the expense of the rest of the population. Uh, but Ariassus, like the other cities in the Hellenistic and early Roman period, um, seems to present us with us, I wouldn't call it quite a democratic society, but one where every householder's voice carried a certain amount of weight. And that's why in all these cities we have little assembly or bouleterion places where I imagine that the heads of all the households would would gather. It would not they would they wouldn't be many excluded families uh, in a in a community like this.